Okay, this is the first cyber club meeting of the year. Um, we still have a cyber club, but due to nearly zero participation, we're really not participating in anything anymore. Sorry. It's just no one's participating. But what we are doing is I'm still going to have weekly meetings. I'm even going to have some speakers coming in. So we're still going to, I'm just not going to worry about submitting points and telling you all need volunteers for Raider Days because it's more hassle on me than anything. So, so that's what's up with the cyber club. We're still going to have Thursday meetings because I sent out the email and I overwhelmingly, I have so many people say, oh, please, please, please do it. So every Thursday I'm planning on being here. There will be a couple times where I won't be able to make it, but I'll try to let you know ahead of time. Um, I will have a couple speakers, like I said, coming in. Now, I do, I already know in April I have to go to Dallas for some forensics training. And then I have to go to Vegas in May, Philadelphia in June. But I'll, I'll do my best. I'll let you know ahead of time my schedule. But they have me going quite a few places, okay? And I might have to go to, where's Dulles? Wherever Dulles is. That's where I'm going to, I guess. Okay, uh, and that'll become apparent why in a minute. Okay, so I'm Ken Do. If you don't know me, I'm the director of the cyber program. Does everybody know me? Most of you? Yeah. You see me around, most of you? I know a few you? of you. A few of you. I, I know him. That's about it. No, just kidding. Uh, yeah, exactly. All right, so um, if you have not heard, um, Eileen Dewey has resigned, and she now works at OSU OKC. So her classes were picked up by me and Arlene and a bunch of other people. So um, a few things have changed. Last fall, I know a lot of you want to know about the degree program changes. I'm assuming that's why you're here for the most part. Okay. By the way, I record them all. Uh, if you go on my YouTube channel, actually, let me show you how that works. In case some of you are YouTube, whatever, don't know how to use YouTube. Illiterate. There you go. Okay, there's this awesome website called YouTube. Whoops. Okay, and if you search for my name, you will find it right here. If you go to my name, then go to my playlist, you will see I have every class I teach here at Rose State, and some at other schools as well. Like here's the Cyber Club. You'll see all the lectures from last time in the Cyber For some reason, two of them were deleted. I have no idea why. I didn't delete them, because I don't think I did. But for the most part, they're all up there. So if you've never looked here, I mean, there's lots and lots of stuff, like forensics. I put the recording up there from two days ago. Um, I don't know how to sort this. For some reason, it, YouTube really sucks at sorting, and, but they're all on there. So. Um, it, someone actually asked me a question this week about downloading the videos. Does anyone know how to download from YouTube? I'll show you how. It's free. If you search for Clip Converter, the top link is clipconverter.cc. Put in the URL, click download, boom, downloads the entire video, done. Another way you can do that is if you go to your YouTube tab, if you put SS in front of the word YouTube in the link. Oh, I did see that. Yeah, just www.ssyoutube, then it should bring you to a uh, Ah, come on, stop. Nice. Okay. Cool. So there you go. You can save from YouTube. I do it all the time at home. So, all right. Everybody okay on YouTube? So they're all up there, and um, I, I I recorded Monday, not Monday. When did I teach forensics? Was it Tuesday? Yeah, Tuesday's lecture, and I keep getting people asking. I'm like, dude, it's in the recording. Go watch it. But uh, it's what? It's not that hard of an assignment either. I know, but I. Two different people have asked me a question, and I'm like, it's there. I specifically went and did it on the recording. So. Is it email tracking again? Yeah. That's a different email this time. Is it more fun? I would think it's actually easier this time. Because you don't have to track to any inbox. Yeah, you don't have to go to any inbox. Okay, so let's continue on. Okay. Um, we had an advisory committee that met in the fall. We have a lot of people on it. <coughs> Come on. It's very fast. But we got people from the FBI on it. We got Boeing, got EOC, we got Tinker. You know, we got lots of people. We got uh, MTM, which has been with Trophy. 
Uh, so we have a lot of people on our committee. And what we do with that committee is anytime we rec we want to make changes to our program, we present it to them. Okay? And overwhelmingly, they were all for all of our changes. So I actually had a really good reason why I needed to make them, and which I'm going to tell you now. But uh, they were 100% behind it, so it's been approved. So what that means is I have one month to do all this paperwork. I have nothing else to do. So if you're on board, what I, if you wonder why I do all day long, so we're going to do all the curriculum actions by the 20th of February. Then it'll get approved. The next fall, these changes will take effect. After tonight, do not go down to our advisor and say, "Ooh, I want to switch to the new digital forensics option." It's not there yet. Okay, don't do it because they don't even know about it. Okay, so it always happens. <laughs> so. Don't do it yet, okay? It'll be in the fall catalog. Whenever whenever that's printed and you can see it, at that point you can start worrying about those things. Two of the classes are already in the schedule for the fall, okay? All right, a few things have changed. We have what's called a CAE2Y certification. Okay, CAE2Y is Center of Academic Excellence at a two-year university or two-year college. Initially, CAEs, which were Center of Academic Excellence, were only available at four-year schools. Well, now I go to a lot of these conferences every year, and people are saying, you know, two-year schools do stuff too. Well, we finally got it approved, and we were actually one of the first six in the nation to get it. Now, we just recently renewed. We actually renewed in December. Uh, that's what I did over Christmas break. While you all were at home, that was, that was last Christmas break. Yeah, last Christmas break, me and Cameron were actually here exception to Christmas Day, all the way to December 31st, get it done. So, so fun stuff. But because of that, this is so fast. Because <coughs> of that renewal, okay, all cyber majors have to have all these courses. Okay. Network administration was not in the cyber degree before. It was in the networking option. Network security was in the networking option. So all of a sudden, we now have to have more classes in the cyber degree. So you see where my problem starts? Okay. So, yeah. well, that's good. Okay. So what? Because what we did is, I had to go in and map these called KUs, knowledge units. They said, where do you talk about distributed file systems? Well, that's covered in network administration. So, to keep our CAE2I certification, we need to make sure a cyber student knows what distributed file system is, and that's covered in that course. So, hence, we need to require that course now. I'll see how all this works. Well, there was just a couple thousand KUs this time. Last time, it was more like 20,000 KUs, but now it was only a couple thousand. But we did all that. So, that's what's happening there. Is that something that, if we've already started the cyber program, Okay, great, great question. Okay, you're never forced to move degree programs unless you skip an entire semester. So, if you're in spring 2016 and you take at least one class a semester, you can stay in your current degree program. If you would like to switch to the new degree program, no problem. Just pretend you do. And then when you go to graduate, Tell them, please evaluate me against the fall 2016 catalog. There's no paperwork to switch your major or switch your catalog, okay? There's only paperwork if we switch back. Like we've had some military people that, you know, they took a semester off because they got deployed to Afghanistan for a year. Well, then we will actually allow them to stay in the old catalog. That requires paperwork. But you don't have to... Tell me, you don't have to tell anybody you want to be on the new catalog, you just start taking classes toward it. When you go see an advisor, he says, yeah, just put me in, these, the classes are required for the 2016. And when you go to graduate, just make sure you put on your graduation. Your, basically, when you're done with your classes, you apply for graduation. Say, so please evaluate me on the fall 2016 catalog. And that's all there is to it. It's pretty seamless. Which okay? one would you recommend for us to have? You're going to need to look and see what's required. Security. Well, I mean, if you're done with the cybersecurity, just keep what you got. I mean, well, I haven't got paperwork stating. Well, right. Well, you're not graduated yet, right. but um, just stick with what you have. But 
when the new one, the catalog gets published, I'm going to show you the changes right now. But it hasn't gone through curriculum yet, so there's a chance they could not approve it. That would be stupid, but they could. Okay? So let me show you current and proposed. Okay, this is our current cybersecurity degree page. Okay? This is the one, if you're in the current catalog, this is what you're taking. Should look familiar to all of you. Okay? You can see network administration is not there. Network security is not there. There's a few things that aren't there. So, here is the proposed and approved by our committee degree sheet. Okay? So the program requirements are going from 24 to 27. Okay? We are adding network administration and network security to program requirements. See that? We are removing operating systems. Operating systems is only required for the CNSS certifications. I mean, so, if you have it, great. You need it for CNSS certifications, but those go away June 2017. See what I'm saying? So, if you want to stick with the current catalog, yeah, you need it. If you want to get the CNS certifications, you still need it. So none of these proposed changes are going to affect the CNSS certification? Correct. Well, th those can't change. Okay. So even if you switch to the new program in fall 2016, and you want the CNSS certifications, you still need operating systems. Right. Those will not change. So we can get the whole deal. Oh, sure. Yeah, you can do all of it. Yes. Well, it's not a problem. You said they expire June? June 2017, which means... You need to complete all the... The last one we can sign off is June, which is spring 2017, okay? So that's what's changing there, okay? Now, there's one more change in the cyber option that we did not get approved, which I am... We're going to get it approved, okay? You'll notice we have ISM in there. See that? Right here, Okay. Well, originally we had ISM, we had ISA, Information Security Assurance. We had ESM, Enterprise Security Management, and we had SSAC. Okay? I leaned taught all three. And I actually looked, and between all the classes, there were 16 projects. Between all three classes. 11 of the projects were duplicated. So it's like, they were, there was massive. So we actually... I got to combine ISA and ESM into ISM. Well, before she retired, well, she was actually okay with now combining SSAC in there as well. So, the new, I'm, hasn't been even gone to my committee yet, I still have to send it to them, but we're planning on removing SSAC from here. So you end up just ISM, ISM will actually encompass all three of them at that point. Well, I mean, okay, the one, here, here's the, you know, that's actually a very good point. The, the thing about the, the cyber degree that I'm most proud of, it's always changing. Because what's happening in the world? Technology is, cyber degree is changing daily. So if you were still enrolled in a program from 2003, no, that's dumb. So, that, again, that last change I told you is not even reflected on paper yet. it is. So if it goes away... Again, it's not going to be gone tomorrow. I mean, we still have to keep it. Because say David here just started in the program on the current catalog, we still have to offer that for at least the full year. Okay? okay? It has to be offered for a while. Okay? So, alright. It's just that I'm trying... I want to make our program better. I mean, it's good now, but I'm, I want it better. I'm at the point where I'm really tired of crappy teaching. I really am. You know, um, we had a teacher who's no longer teaching here, by the way, who taught our principal's class. Y'all had the principal's class. Okay. Uh, principles of Information Assurance. If you haven't had it, you will have it. He literally required them to do all the end of chapter questions. Weren't graded, weren't counted for at all. And take two tests. That's it. I mean, that was literally it. And the tests were just the test bank. It's like, what did they learn? So, I can't have that anymore. That's stupid. I mean, you didn't learn nothing. So, point is, I want to make you learn something. Okay? So, 
That and also the support and related is changing. In the past, you know, see, everybody saw those three courses. And everybody picked from those three courses. But if you read the text, it basically said any course. These are just the recommended courses. We're just saying any course. Why recommend courses? Because so many people came to me and says, but I need personal finance. Well, no, you don't. You got to do this right there. Uh, no, you don't. It was just a recommended course. So that's being removed. It's now just going to say any business course from the CIT prefix or management 2313 with the exception of those specific ones. It was in the old catalog. Not in this catalog. Okay. Is this required for the certs, though? It's still required for the yeah. certs. That's what the so if I'm on the old catalog and I have network admin, would, could I count that in for, like, discrete math? So I have yeah, actually, discrete math will accept any CIT course. Okay. Anything. Yeah, pretty much anything. So, yeah, there is a, uh, yeah. So, okay, in the, in the bottom... Uh, there's also a change down here. Oh, I didn't incorporate. Well, the bottom will be worded differently. It's not me to change it, but see where it says hyper, H-P-E-R. There's two hours. All programs on campus are going to say hyper or personal finance. So that's the reason I'm moving from top because it's going to be down here. That's just the college-wide policy. So you no longer have to go bowling or weightlifting or whatever. You can now take personal finance in place of it. Okay. Everybody okay on the, yes? Just one question. So are there any, like, four-year institutions that, would, that might uh, want some kind of physical thing on there? No, actually. Not I don't know any of them that are required. Okay. I know it sucks. I mean, you can go through high school now without taking PE. Which is it's crazy. Okay. There's one change no one caught. See the title of the degree at the top? Cybersecurity and digital forensics rather than networking and cybersecurity. Uh, we actually had a discussion about this today. Should we go with just cybersecurity? Yes, we could. Because digital forensics is actually part of cybersecurity. But it was a very good point brought up by one of our advisors. He said digital forensics is kind of a sexy title. And if you have a degree in cybersecurity and digital forensics, it actually sounds more technical than just cybersecurity. Do y'all you agree with that? Yeah. yeah. I'm taking all the questions. So I'm thinking, yeah. Well, now I'm going to show you why we're renaming the degree. Okay. Here is the proposed digital forensics option. There's no more networking option. That's gone. Okay. Because remember, two of the networking courses are here. Oh, and let me explain what happened to the rest of the networking courses. There's five. Okay. Network security, network admin are right here. Routing is missing. Okay, routing is going away. Here's why. There's such a small portion of people in the industry that actually do routing. For instance, at Rose State, we have one person. Literally one. And what happens is, whenever you get a job in that, they're going to send you for Cisco training anyway. And we were training people in this, and no one was doing it in the real world. And even Brad Johnson, who came to our program, did the networking option, got a job at Rose State, they sent him for Cisco training. It's so like, you know, they're going to send you for specialized training anyway. And it, the class wasn't enough to get your, your Cisco certification. So I said, you know, if I had to get rid of one, that's probably one to go with. Never troubleshooting management is kind of like a capstone. It really doesn't teach anything new. It's really just some from each of these classes, which was what it was designed to be. But if I had to get rid of something, I'm, you know, because I, I want to keep, the, you know, I could, like our nursing program, make this program 93 hours. You would probably not appreciate that. Not at all. So we're trying to keep it out. See, if we were in Missouri, they get a new law. No associate's degree can have more than 60 hours. That's it. What happens when you lower the number of hours required? Well, first of all, you get more graduates. Less hours means they graduate sooner. People go to work sooner, make more money sooner. So it makes sense. I can't get ours down to 60, but I get down to 62. So, as close as I can get, because that hyper thing in there. Okay. So, top parts can be the same. Now, the digital forensics option. There is a possibility of a little bit of wording change here. Like, mobile forensics, I'm pretty sure, is now being called 
networking in mobile forensics. Let me explain what that is. That's already in the catalog for the fall, in the schedule for the fall, by the way. Okay. Currently in our digital forensics course, we do one networking project. We do one mobile project, but there's so much more we could do in that area. So that's what that class is. It's going to be a lot more. I mean, come on, mobile's everything now. Before long, this will be gone. So it's all going to be mobile. Okay. Then the digital forensics course, which if you have the cyber option, you already got the course anyway. Okay, data recovery and analysis. We do a manual file recovery in that class. Those of you who have already taken it, you know what I'm talking about? The hex editor thing? Well, we recover from a uh, FAT32 flash drive. What about NTFS? What about Mac? What about Unix Linux? What about all this other stuff? So there's so much more we could do in that area. So we're doing an entire class in there. Uh, digital forensics reporting. You know, uh, a lot of times in, that, in the forensics course, I get students upset with me because here's an example. If um, well, let me show you here, let me bring this up here. That's too long. Um, okay, what's that file name on the bottom file on the list? RSVPs.txt. You all agree with that? Is it RSVPs? No, it's not. <laughs> RSVPs and RSVPs.txt is. If you went to court, that's two totally different things. And I guess students get really upset. Like in the, image, in the imaging lab, they give me the file name like image 12. That's not the name of the file. It's image12.jpg. Okay. So the whole reporting option, we, we don't do that right now. When I was in Tulsa, we did. We don't do it here because I'm trying to focus more on the techniques and learning the stuff rather than the reporting. But we need to learn the reporting. Hence, we need a class in that. As far as reporting, is it going to be like running the reporting through in case? Or well, oh, no, it's going to be, be that. Like Plus, it's also going to be writing reports. So they would work in a court of law. So would that also, as far as like the cybersecurity option, as a pen tester, you're going to be writing reports on... Okay, a forensics person and pen they all write reports. Right, so wouldn't yeah. that be, wouldn't you need to include the pen testing part of that in the report? Well, some of it, yes. But we don't know. We, we haven't created the course yet. Right. Again, it's just we, we've already had a meeting with a different advisory committee, and they approved all of it, yes. So it's going to be like technical report writing with... But for forensics okay. content. Like with, with the legal aspect of, you know, you have to have make sure the content is right. 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 And, and it's like, okay, now we're going to do this project, and now I want you to write the report of your results. Because, you know, when I was up in TU, up in Tulsa, there was a, a guy came in and spoke from the cyber crimes unit. He was talking, I told this story before, but he was talking about this lady who was getting stalked, and it turns out it was an, a friend or a really good personal friend that she basically scorned years and years ago, and he's been stalking her entire life. Well, they had proof he did it. They had the emails that he did, literally from his machine, sending them to her, stalking her. Went to court. The jury said, there is no way you can track anybody via email through the case app. So obviously it wasn't written well enough. So that's part of where we're going with this. Okay. The last course is reverse engineering. What we're looking for, reverse engineering is on the schedule as well. That's, okay, we got a piece of malware. How does it function? What does it do? You know, we're actually using OLEDB and actually break it down to assembly code to find out what that file really does. Okay, so you can make a signature for it, so you can detect it better. You know. So, not, I've already got scheduled training for that one too. So, see, I've had little bits of all this training already, but I like to go to another class and get certified in it, get more experience, so I can bring back good projects. Yes. So, is that going to have a programming prerequisite? Are, are you going to actually teach us something? Like a little bit? That's kind of it's going to have to be a little bit. We, we would love to bring back assembly. I would love to bring back straight C programming. Oh, but the problem is you guys would enroll in it, some of you. But there's not a big industry demand for it. Okay? It's like assembly. Come on. How many people actually, the very few users. So we haven't determined exactly which one. All I know is the class I'm going to does not require any assembly experience, yet they cover some of it in the class. So we're probably going to do the same way. Yeah, they just don't know these. Yeah. So yeah. that's 
that class is going to be more about how to use the tool and what you're going to be looking for as far as what the malware is actually doing right. and how to translate that into right. instead of learning the program. Right, exactly. Exactly. How to use the tools rather than, right. It's going to be used OLLIDB to actually decompile it and see what it's doing and how to read that and determine what it's doing. That's where we're going with this. So it's like okay. disassembly. Yes. With your digital forensics, is it going to be covering a lot of the cloud problems with cloud? That will be up here in the mobile. Yeah, in the mobile and the networking forensics. Yeah, this digital forensics will stay about the same. This is kind of like an introductory forensics course now. We touch on all these different projects. Okay? All right. So see. We actually own Celebrite, believe it or not, but it has expired. We will be renewing it. But if you haven't heard, there's a budget crunch going on right now. This year, between fall 15 and now, we have already had a $1.6 million budget cut at Rose State here. We've already been told for next year, we're already getting a $1.79 million budget cut on top of all these other ones. So it's not just that. No, it's a literally another $1.79 million. So the problem is there's no money. The only reason I'm going to this training is i got a grant to pay for it. I mean, I see stuff at Rose State. I mean, there's no money. If you don't know this, our money comes from oil. All of Oklahoma money comes from oil. It's happening to oil right now. It's free. I mean, seriously, think about it. You go fill up with what I see. It was $0.47 cents in Michigan this weekend. I saw a dollar thirty-one here. Yeah, I filled up my car for the first time from when the gas light actually came on. The pump couldn't fill it anymore. It cost me less than twenty dollars. See, I still think it's crazy you guys actually pay for gas. I haven't bought gas in years, but you know that's a whole other story. Y'all keep playing. I don't know why. I just, okay, so so that's the new digital forensics option. Again, the wording might change just a little, but you get the gist of what it's going to be. I do expect a lot of you to take this. Because yeah. so many people just have been asking questions about it. Ooh, I'd love to have this course. Okay, So, the, mo the networking mobile and reverse engineering are already in the fall schedule. Haven't even been created yet, but they're already there. So it's kind of a weird thing. That's why there's all these pound signs. We don't even have a number for it yet. So, And it's going to be 2093 for the first entire full year. Because whenever we create a class at Rose State, we give it a number, but it's listed as 2093 for an entire year to see, well, you know, was that a good idea or should we scratch it? So, <coughs> so that's what's going to happen there. And this is how the support and relay is going to work for the cyber option well, that's all it's going to say. Okay, and then the bottom, you know, I told you about the gen eds already, including personal finance. So, every okay on the new degree? All right. Um, again, it's not published anywhere yet. Literally, you're the first students to actually see it other than the committee. I would not have a problem giving it to you, but don't go see Steve Johnson. He, he, I, he's going to be pissed at me anyway. He hates when I tell you guys stuff up front. He, oh, God, he gets so pissed. But don't do it, because I'm telling you, half of you are going to say, ooh, I want to go enroll in reverse engineering. He's like, what? I never heard of that. It's not. There's no course yet. Thing. Shouldn't digital forensics be up in the program requirements and then you could put a stipulation in there except for CIT 2553? <coughs> those are that's true. It's in both. Yeah. yeah, that might be a good option. And that would be that streamline everything. Better. Actually, it might because then if I remove it, because this will bring this down by one class, then if I remove SSAC, that'll bring that. That might actually work. Okay. So, so that might be a good idea. Can we yeah. expect to see these at the end of the summer in the catalog? Then? Oh, yeah. The, the catalog will be printed. See, the schedule will be out in March. And it'll list the courses. The catalog, I think, comes out. I think it's in May. I think yeah, the near end. the end of the semester, you'll get the catalog. They'll be in there. Again, the wording might not be all perfect at that point. But. <laughs> okay, so, what's the, what's the exact date when we start seeing the first state certificates that are replacing CSS? That's a whole other story. And what's required for that? Let me, let me cover that story in a small amount. Right before our advisory committee, I was researching those certificates. And I found this. Whatever, come on. Okay. 
Okay, Cyberwatch, National Cyberwatch Center, is a school similar to like us. Um, what the heck? Okay. See, we're part of CSEC, which is the Cybersecurity Education Consortium. That's in the middle of the states. Cyberwatch is actually east and west. But they, they cover classes. They have certificates in this. We're planning on doing the same kind of thing. And what that would be would be you get a certificate in digital forensics, which means you took the digital forensics courses. No gen eds. I mean, you could, but I mean, they wouldn't be required. So they're not going to align with the, with the CNSS. Not yet. There's more information on that, right? Where's it at? I'm trying to find it. So, as far as the digital forensics certificate goes, when could we expect to see that next <sighs> January? If none of you bother me, maybe in the fall. <laughs> uh, We're actually uh, having a meeting on Monday. About this stuff, we are me, Arlene. We're all meeting two o'clock on Monday. Um, there was this is the one I want you to see. Okay, the CNSS certifications are gone. Ours ex last one expires June 2017. It's being replaced with the National Cybersecurity Workforce Framework. Okay, the original plan was they would list risk analysts, but they didn't anymore. They changed it to this. Okay, so what you do now is, you know what? I need to protect my network, so I'm going to go to protect. Then they're going to tell you, okay, here's some of the courses. Here's some of the things you need to learn or do to protect your network. I'm worried about incidences. Then they tell you some of the job roles that pertain to that, some of the tasks that might be performed, some of the uh, KSAs, the, the specialty areas that people need to look. So it, was, it didn't end up being as clear cut as the draft that I had seen was. The original draft was, you know, risk analyst needs to know this. It didn't end up that way. So how would a potential employer <coughs> look at this certification gross set offers and know that that lines up with this foggy? I don't know yet. I'm telling you, I don't know. I literally found this out right before advisory came. You're like, oh, crap. Because I've been looking at the draft document I had. I said, somewhere there has to be the final document, and this is it. So is it still beneficial? Okay, it doesn't hurt. Put it this way, if you're going to get a job somewhere, you know, I have a Novell certification. I have an MCSC certification. I still list them. Okay, Someone might know what they are. And even if you get a job for someone that doesn't even recognize CNSS, they might, you, know, you can tell them, I got CNSS 4016, which is a federal certification for a risk analyst. So they don't recognize it, but at least now they know you got training in risk analysis. You see what I'm saying with that? So they're still beneficial. Um, I have not given up on doing our own certificate in risk anal analysis. I just was planning on basing on this. But this is, you can see, this is very deep and confusing. This is really certificate material. It's more like. I know. But what we need to do, like Cyberwatch did, is they said their curriculum is now in line with this. So now you can, you know what you saw a second ago where I showed, let's, I clicked on this and I clicked on this. So the job titles, so you can, you know, th their degree is focusing on jobs now. So with this degree, you can be an incident responder. You can be an incident handler. See what I'm saying? So it's, it's really, really different. And I don't have an answer yet. But so. how likely are? Okay, there's entry-level positions everywhere, um, but, you know, um, probably not many, probably not many, so, all right, so, so that, I'm glad you brought that up, but no, I just don't have an answer yet, okay, I wish I did, all right, um, so yeah, we covered that, um, all right, so that's the, I showed you the forensics one, the network option, Option being removed. So, okay. It was funny because Steve threw a fit. No, you can't remove the networking option. So many people take it. Which is true. A lot of people do. Well, I looked. Every single person that did the networking option also did the cyber option. There was not a single person who did networking only. Not one. Just because there's only a three class difference. Ah, there's not, exactly. There's not much difference. So, and everyone's here for cyber security anyway. 
And since I'm having to include a couple of the courses in the program requirements now, it's like I would like to bring – see, way back when I first got hired here in 2000, I ran a networking business. I've worked in the networking shop at Tinker. I have a lot of experience. I taught all the networking courses. But I can't teach them all now. Now, but network admin this summer, I'm teaching it because I'm really not happy with the way it's going the last couple of years. So this summer, that course is being all revamped. I'm not saying if you take it now, you're screwed. I'm just saying, you know, when you hire adjuncts, sometimes you get what you pay for. And really, they have no buy-in. They just teach whatever. I need to go in there and fix it, make sure it's the right stuff. And, you know what I'm saying? Hope you understand. Okay. I'm scheduled to teach it in the spring. Um, summer. Summer. Yeah. Go back a little bit here. Where is? I need this one. This is all the top secret files. You can't see. You can't look in here. P90X. We got it. You know what we did a few years ago? It was awesome. During the summer, we took over room 129. Took all the furniture, stuffed against the walls, made it into a gym for the entire semester. We did P90X every single day. It was awesome. It was awesome. I loved it. But then it stopped. Okay. The summer schedule. I mean, you can see what's in it. And you'll see that Ken Dewey right here is teaching. Oh, that one's being changed. That's in the interim. Where's Ken Dewey? Here he is. He's teaching network admin, network security, because they both need to be updated somewhat. Network security is close, but... Uh, I'm also teaching wireless, which that's another story. But uh, so you see, Eileen's not on there. But that's really yeah, the new classes. I know you want to see the new ones. Is that up on Oasis already? It is, but it's not the final yet. We have what's called the blue line, which we have right now, which is we can still make changes until July, uh, not July, February fourth. They're due at February 4th, and at that point, they'll all be in there. So if you wait till February 4th, then they'll all be in there. Okay, and if you look on here, you'll see here. Oh, where is it? Come on, Dewey Kenneth. There's, maybe this is the bottom. I swear we got those two new classes in here. Who's staff, staff? Oh, that, that, that's that guy. His name is Staff. Where's the new classes? Y'all see the new classes? Oh, there they are. There was reverse engineering and mobile and networking forensic. Those are the two new courses. See, I said the 2093 thing. They're being taught by me. They are being taught in the classroom. They will both be taught. Actually, they're being taught in one first eight weeks and second eight weeks in the fall. They'll be taught on this day, which is Tuesdays at 540. So if you want to get in, that's when they're going to be taught. You can take both of them. We're only adding two at the moment. How so. many people are you going to there? Whatever room they put me in. That's really how we do it. In the in-class class, it's however many chairs there are. It, I really don't know. Because, um... However many chairs you can squeeze into. Well, you see, the, in there, you know. see, the whole problem is the whole... Like, we got the math department in here right now. And we, so, but now, Oh, the internship is actually this class you're in right now. We need something to hold this room for this meeting. So we stick an internship class in there and no one rolls in. We set it at zero. No, we do. We set it at zero so no one can enroll. Because if I... What? The mobile and networking forensics? Yes. Is that like it was on incident there. response? Or... It's going to be using Celebrite and more, all, you know, Paraben and stuff like that. Um, but like the networking aspect, we barely touch on it in the current front. We need to do a lot more in that. That really, like Devin, what is it? Two or three hundred thousand hits per second on their network. Um, we're going to be doing using a lot more of the tools. Uh, I can't think of the name all of a sudden. Bro, and there's another one. So we're going to be bro using yeah. bro yes. So we're going to be a bro evangelist. <laughs> but that's where we're, again it hasn't been created yet. Um, okay. But that's you know yeah. So that's where we're going. But yeah. The, uh, all right. So. Um, yeah, this is the schedule that's been submitted. We're going to make a few small changes, but that's all. Okay? All right. Are we okay on the schedule questions?
Okay. Uh, now let's talk about some. Um, what's it called? The Doctor Snoit thing. What's that called? The Grant. The Grant. Grant. Okay. Doctor Snoit met with me last year. I mean, he calls me weird times and oh my God, it's super important. He talks to you right now. Well. The original plan was he was getting a grant for $12 million that would pay. See, what happened was, let me, let me, let me step back a few years. Remember how I said originally they always thought two-year schools didn't learn the darn thing, didn't learn anything? Unless you went to a four-year school, you were nothing. Well, then we a person like Chad Johnson. Chad Johnson went to Middell Votech, Dell City High School, came to Rose State, went on to the NSA, hated programming, but looked at what they were doing and wrote a program that got patented and the NSA is still using it to this day. He did all this good. He still works for the NSA at TU. If you're going to go to TU and get a job at the NSA, you're going to interview with Chad Johnson. So he is like a shining star. Okay. So we have people like him. We have people like Laura Lewis. Laura Lewis, her dad's the mayor of Moore. She came here with a history degree, couldn't find a job. Um, it's funny, you know, because she sat in my office and said, I got a degree and I can't find a job. I'm like, she goes, I got a bachelor's degree. I'm like, what's your degree? And she goes, history. I'm like, huh, imagine that. <laughs> so she got our degree, went out to TU. Um, while she was there playing around, she made a Bluetooth gun that can reach 300 feet. Now Bluetooth limited 30 feet? No, it's not. Well, she did all this stuff and went to the NSA funny because I actually contacted her to, during her internship. Hey, Laura, how's it going? I hate it. It's not good. What do you mean you hate it? She goes, I go in the morning, every morning, 8 o'clock. At 5 o'clock, they force me out the door. She goes, I want to spend 24 hours in my job. She goes, this is the coolest thing I've ever seen in my life. I don't want to leave. But every day, they force me home. And you work at the NSA, you can't work at home. It's not like you can bring work home with you. You can't. But she did great. Now she were, she actually just left the NSA recently, works for the railroad department, going around hacking into all the different railroads around the nation, making probably 200000 or more. So we got people like that who did really good stuff. So the NSA is like, whoa, these guys came from two-year schools. What's going on? Raymond Hache came from here. The advisor is downstairs right now. That She's related to Raymond. Raymond came here. He actually made my AES slides for me. That's why at the beginning it says, you know, in Raymond Hache. He broke some encryption that no one in the NSA had ever been able to break. I don't know what it was. I'll never know what it is. He got some award from like the president's level. So they're starting to notice that we're actually doing something down here. So uh, they come up with this grant that's going to pay for the second year at a community college and then two years at TU. So you finish Rose State and then get a bachelor's at TU then go work with the federal government. Dr. Schnoy wants the best of the best, the cream of the crop. He's only taking a couple. So if your GPA has, starts with anything but a four, don't ask me. I'm serious, because that's, I mean, he's only accepting a couple people. Okay. Originally, he said it could also pay for something in their last year at OSU and then go on for a master's. That's off the table now. Because the grant has actually been finalized now, and now it's strictly just the two-year and then the TU. I mean, you know, the one you're here and then the TU. You cannot have a degree yet. It's like I was talking to Patrick here. He's almost ready to graduate. So I said, slow down. <laughs> he's got 4.0. He needs to slow down because if he graduates, he's not going. But he's not done yet. And he wants to clip all these courses. So I said, don't. Don't clip them. Just we'll stretch it out a little bit longer, maybe throw in a couple of humanities classes, make you well-rounded, and then, <laughs> and then uh, submit them to the program. Cameron can't go. Cameron, believe it or not, 4.0, amazing student. I wanted him to go. I even begged Dr. He goes, I can't. Dr. Tony's he's like, I can't. If he already has a degree, he cannot go. I said, but he's enrolled at OSU now. See, Cameron didn't want to go to back to school. Cameron's making 60-something thousand dollars, and he's 19 years old. Isn't that nuts? But uh, Cameron didn't want to go to school until me and a few people basically beat him up and said, no, you're stupid. Go to school. Why? Could you just imagine if he had a master's or a PhD or something? So I was talking to Dr. Schnoy about him, and he's like, I can't accept him. Like that. But I said, he's a 4.0. No, he's super sharp. I mean, you give Cameron something to do, and it's done correctly. Well, except for one thing. But there's this one paper we have to submit for grant students into this stupid website 
nobody has ever got it right except for Caleb Clave one time. Yeah, those of you that are on my grant, there's a big demographic sheet you fill out. Well, here he submits all that information, and it, uh, it sucks. They literally go through with a fine tooth gun. They're like, wait a minute. David, you showed David the freshman, yet we see that his total of hours is 24. That's, I mean, they literally check everything. But, so talking to Dr. Chung about Cameron, he wants to accept him for his master's degree. He said, no, no, tell him to finish OSU. He gets four to 5,000 applicants a semester into his master's degree. So basically, Dr. Chinoy said he wants Cameron, but not for the bachelor's. For sure, you're better off with the master's anyway. It just matters. It's life. A guy came in my office this week. I don't know if he's in this room today, asking me, should I go to OSU for my master's degree or should I go to Rose State? I'm like, I'm up front with you. No brainer, get a master's degree. I mean, it makes sense. But if you want to learn the material, come here. But if you want a higher degree, you go to OSU. I wish you still water that is for their masters. So uh, Cameron's going to finish OSU, then we're going to he's going to go to TU. Uh, not saying you have to have a 4.0 for that, but he wants really bright people. In the past, if I recommend as a student, they got accepted. We had a couple students who caused issues. They were actually OSU students who took one class here. I did great. Went to TU and totally screwed up. One of them still to this day has not graduated. Got a job at the NSA and everything. He just, I was tired. I needed a break. No, you, no, <laughs> you don't do that. So ba what that did is Dr. Schnoy thinks all of a sudden, Rose State students suck. So I need to get a couple of really good ones going again. So he's like, oh, wow, you're still good again. So but, so it's tough. Um, Are you saying you can't have a degree to do that grant? You, you cannot. Okay, the grant that pays for one year here and two years at Tulsa, you cannot have a completed degree. As of last week, he called me from some airport as he was leaving Washington. He's like, Kenneth, I can't talk to you right now. I'm like, I'm busy. Okay, fine, call me back in 20 minutes. But then, you know, he's, we talked to him for like an hour. So is a, a degree is considered an associate's or a bachelor's? And when, what's the date of as of? You can't have a completed degree as of? All I know is in August, you need to have a year left. A year left. A year left here or a year left? Here. Year left here. But like I'm telling Patrick, don't apply for graduation. <laughs> you don't get a degree until you apply. You agree with that statement? Mm -hmm. Don't apply. Take some courses. So, you, okay, if you if you get accepted, you're going to need some humanities. You're going to need a speech. You're going to need a science with a lab. There you go. There's some classes for you. So if I were to can, uh, cancel my graduation this semester, extend it, I could be on it. When did you apply? You got a 4.0? I, I mean, that's close. I, 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 okay. 3.95 I brought a student up there once who was just wanting to learn about the program. I did not recommend it. I even told Dr. Shulley, you know, well, Dr. Shulley accepted him anyway. And the student dropped out. Because you're going to be going for a bachelor's degree. And their bachelor's degree is excessively hard. It's an engineering degree. You'll be taking calculus 1 through 15, or whatever there is. <laughs> And I'll tell you, this one student dropped out. Their tuition in 2004 was 20000 a semester. No, yeah, guess what happens if you drop out? Guess what Cody does? Pays back 20000 a semester. Mm -hmm. So you really need to be focused on this. I mean, I didn't have to pay, luckily, when I went there. Thank right. God. But it's got to be higher. I mean, they're one of the top 100 in the nation. He is. I think when I looked last this was in 2009 ish. It was $27,000 a semester. It's 25 now. 25 with housing. Oh, but it's, cra it's just crazy expensive. So, the point is if you go there, you really need to be great. Okay? Well, I mean, you can go to other schools. See, the problem is they're good at stuff, so they can, they can charge. Okay? They can, and, and you know, he does. He, it's not to him what the tuition is, but I mean, you get on his grants, he pays for everything. They pay for the tuition, they pay for all your books, and they even pay you. Last time, when I was up there, it was $2,500 cash a semester. Got to be way more than that now. So if I have an unrelated degree, I got no chance for this grant? For the one for the bachelor's degree, correct. Because okay. he specifically says they cannot have a degree. 
Because the whole point is this federal money who wants to help someone at the community college working on an associate's and applied science degree wants them to succeed. So, because that's what's happening. When they get the Chads and the Lores and the Raymonds who are doing great, that came from a two-year school, they're like, wow, they're doing something. We need to really, you know, help them. And that's what they're starting to do. So, which is great. But he specifically told me, not have a degree. Gotcha. So, now, this spring, he wants to bring some students up there. If you wanted to come, I'm not bringing everybody. Don't even ask. <laughs> but, I mean, if you have, like, maybe Cody with a 3.9, you with, I mean, you can come and ask him. But he's probably going to tell you. But, again, he changes his mind sometimes, too. So, but he wants two or three. I got David Magar with a 4.0 GPA. Mm -hmm. I got Patrick with a 4.0 GPA. There's two. If this is two or three, I mean, I already got two. And I don't know if anyone's... Sorry, but he wants the cream of the crop of the... You know. I would like... Some of you know Carrie King. She's amazing at Friends. I would love her to go. She's not good at math. I mean, nothing against Carrie. She knows. I talked to her. But... You think Carrie would be able to get through calculus, whatever the heck, and differential equations and every other math thing known to man? Probably not. Whereas Patrick probably could. So, so for the rest of us, please, what, what would you recommend? Okay. <laughs> Good. Okay, that was the grant. Now let's continue on with higher education. Sure. So what would you recommend? Uh, I mean, I know there's a lot of options as far as OSU IT, right. OU, uh, OU, OSU Stillwater, excuse me. You, Cameron, and Lawton now has cybersecurity. Oh, now? That guy went through training when I did in 2003. Uh, They've had it since then. But they might have, they might be now. I mean, uh, sorry, now UCO is developing their forensic program. Okay, but, let me explain the differences. Okay. OSU IT accepts our program 100%, which means every class you take here at Rose State, they also offer there, which means you're going to get credit for it. You're going to accept all 62 hours. You're going to need 60-something and graduate with a bachelor's degree. They have a trimester system, which means three equal semesters a year, 15 weeks each. You're done in 18 months. Okay. You go to UCO. They're going to accept our classes, but digital forensics, for example, they do not have a digital forensics course. Now, they have forensics towards the whole uh, blood and guts forensics. They just developed. They, they just, just did? They have a digital they yeah, do now? Okay. I just transferred it. Okay, let's pick something else. Um, <laughs> it's really minuscule. It's a double major between like information and MIS or something. Uh, yeah, it's MIS. And yeah. They just talked about you, Pope Chair. I said that. Okay. But the whole, um, so, well, let's pretend they don't have that course for my story. Sure. Okay. So they do not have a digital forensics course. It's a recording now, it's true. So what that means is they will accept it, but as an elective. You only get so many, like, kind of like we have sport and related, you get two. You get a few more to bachelor's level, but only a few. So if all those are filled up by the courses that we had here that they don't have, well, first of all, you're missing a couple program requirements in that way. Like, say you went for their MIS degree. So you're going to have to pick up a couple courses. So you might end up needing about 85 to not, you know, I think the last time I checked was 87 hours to graduate with a bachelor's. To go to OU, they accept even less. You need about 90-something hours to graduate with a bachelor's. So if you get down to which one has the least number of hours required, OSUIT is the way to go. University of Maryland, University College, UMUC has a has a very good cybersecurity, cyber forensics, cyber forensics. Uh, they have a very, as far as uh, they have a great digital forensics. That's the reason why I asked about USB okay. and one in yeah. and the registry and finding stuff in the registry. The <clears> but yeah, that's a great one. There's a lot of options out there, but. You know, it comes down to, so if you want to get a degree quickest, OSU IT is your way to go. But I'm going to tell you up front, you might not love all their courses. But I've told a lot of people this. Here's, you know, when I went, you know, how many of you have had forensics here? Quite a few of you. Okay. Remember John the Ripper? Awesome project. You spent umpteen bazillion hours on it. Uh, about ten. Yeah. Okay. I went to TU and did the same project. The passwords were baseball, softball, golf, and tennis. It took me five minutes and I'm done. Literally, done. How much do you think I learned in that? Nothing. But I played with it forever to figure out how it worked. 
I had to recover files, literally like two files. That was it. I was done. But I kept playing with it. My point is with OSU IT, they're focusing you on where to do work, but just because it's not required, you know, if something's not required, doesn't mean you can't figure it out on your own. You know what I mean? Like at TU, literally, five passwords is all I had to break. So I could have said, I'm done and gone ahead of pizza or something. No, I played with the tool to figure it out. OSU, take what they're teaching you and just take that as a starting point. They have a, um, they have a class that does some very basic reverse engineering. I forget which class it is. But take that and expand upon it. I mean, do the project, but then play with the project. Okay? You know, just go way above and beyond. You know, uh, where else other than Tulsa do we go for a master's degree in cybersecurity? USMC. U UMUC. UMUC. I'm doing, I'm starting their digital forensics uh, master degree in security. Is it stupid expensive? Well, that's no more expensive than, um, what is it? Uh, oh, what's, uh, uh, what's one downtown, the Christian school? Is it Southern Baptist? Uh, no, not Southern. Well, whatever. Yeah, but OCU, that's the one. Okay. But my point is, just because they require this much doesn't mean you can't learn more. So many people, well, that's all they told me to do. I didn't, they didn't tell me to read chapters three through six. So read chapters three through six anyway. You know, you see what I'm saying? So, so many people say, oh, I didn't learn nothing. Well, no, you didn't learn nothing because you didn't learn nothing. You chose not to learn nothing. They, you could have learned so much more, you chose not to. But You understand what I'm saying there? I make my digital forensics class here very tough to force you to learn it. But how many of you students, if the passwords were five words, literally you type John, the commands hit enter, it's done, would have just stopped at that point. Probably most of them. But I didn't want you to do that. I wanted you to have to figure out, have to do the extra to get the experience. That's what you have to do on your own at OSU. Okay? Do you have a question? Okay. Uh, I was just going to say, as far as the graduate degree in cybersecurity, I think our alma mater has Oh, yeah, they have a good one, uh, Management yes, Information sir. Systems. Yes, sir. Yeah. And they recently brought on board cybersecurity options. Nice. Okay. Yeah, I, my first bachelor's is at Webster University, right here on Tinker. Not a bad degree. So you got a degree from there. So it's not a bad degree. I don't know why I didn't think about them. Um, but uh, yeah, as long as yeah, cybersecurity is the up and coming thing. This last year, there was a 74% job growth in cybersecurity, where every other field is like 74% negative. <laughs> so, so that that's. I mean, I just hear so many people complain about OSU. You know. You get what you put into it. And if you don't put in the work, you're not going to learn anything. They're not going to force you to learn anything. I mean, come on. What, what is our high school teaching our kids nowadays? Nothing against you because you're in high school now. But they literally teach you a small amount. And many students, that's all they learn. They stop learning at that point. Yes? So the question, are you talking about OSU in general or OSU IT? OSU IT. OSU Stillwater has a master's degree in telecommunications management. Even has some forensics courses in there now. I saw it because someone brought it to me. I forget, somebody did just this week. I can't remember what courses. I don't know how great they are, <coughs> uh, but I know they have the program. Okay, I don't know much about it. Uh, Shalon Simmons, if you know Shalon, actually got her degree there. So, I mean, any degree is good and any degree is bad. I'll tell you that right now. So I know that's not what all you want to hear, but that's the way it is. It's, it's the way it is. I mean, it's really what you want to put into it. You know, I could have gone home at 4 o'clock today and said, screw you all. <laughs> but I'm here because I want you to learn something. And I wish you got, some of you do, I'll tell you. This guy, he's got a project doing week four. We're on week one, he's done with it. But what, one question maybe, two questions? Yeah. That's what we need. We need people to just jump in there. You show up all night. I'm not telling you to do this for every project. You were up all night last night. I realized not everybody could do that. But you need to get excited about some of this stuff. Now, trust me, ISM, SSAC, there is no excitement. No. <laughs> now, actually, the ISM I'm teaching, there will be some. I, okay, I taught that I, the, the ISM course already. I actually have the entire, I did put up two lectures today, by the way. Um, I taught the entire course, and I even have projects already made. I just need to update them. So, I'm sorry, I've just been so busy this week, and it's like every five minutes there's another student in my office. It's like, the heck? I'm like 800 emails behind. So. 
Oh, yeah, they won't be any words. That's part of the reason. Okay, I'm sorry. It drives me crazy when you don't learn anything, when it sucks that bad. You know, I took SSAC. I taught it here the first time it was taught. I took ESM. I, I took all those to you. Yeah, they were dry, but there was stuff to do that was exciting. Um, we so. had the same class. It was, it was more uh, along the lines of firewall, firewall, firewall must allow this. Yeah. That one. That one. I, I, those, yeah. Is anyone yeah. taking SSC this, SSAC now? Okay. Yeah. Casey Walker's teaching it. Yeah. It's, it's been good so far. Okay. I gave him all kinds of ideas. Now he's going to try to fix it. Okay. Problem is, I can't teach all of them. They, they, literally, they limit me on what I can teach. They won't let me teach it. I can't teach for free, believe it or not. I can't. They won't let me. I've actually tried that. They will not let me teach a class for free. Now, this class, I still don't know how they let me do that. That's weird. <laughs> Maybe no one's noticed. But, uh, but uh, Zero students, you're not actually teaching. That, that's why. <laughs> that's why there's nobody enrolled in it. That's exactly why. Okay. So I was wondering how we're getting away with it. Zero right, no one's enrolled. You guys aren't paying, so that's why no one's noticing it. Yeah. 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 But, all right, so I answer that question. Quote, so the bang for your buck, the quickest degree to get is OSUIT. Degree you're probably going to learn the most, go to TU. Pay $800 billion. <laughs> okay. so go to USM, USMC is a good degree. Cameron, I know Pedro down there. I actually taught Pedro, actually. He was one of my students in one of my classes, in the forensics class. Uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> but their program was decent, but I don't know what it is now. I haven't seen it in years, but it was good. So I was actually a keynote speaker at one of their things. What? That's a bachelor's Yes, bachelor's of Cameron, yes. Yeah. Cameron and Lawton. Any other questions about anything pertaining to this area? Oh, yeah, he's had that for years. Oh, wow. It's called the Scholarship for Service Grant. That pays, basically, you do it, then you work for the government for two years. Okay. Oh, and the people that, the, the batch, you know, the one year here and two years of TU degree, whoever they get accepted, or well, if you get accepted, you ain't taking no summer classes because you can do a summer internship this year in DC, then an internship a year later. So that would slow you down a little. Yeah, that's he's doing something totally different. Because he wants you to get in there at the federal level, see what's going on to whet your appetite, get you excited, so you finish up strong. You see what I'm saying? Yes. It's, it's a new way of doing it. It's a good idea. And and so he knows we're teaching stuff right. here, so you maybe have some background. So, yeah, it's a brand new. I think he said it would actually be with the Navy Department. He's got a new thing doing a lot with that. But. And information with the NSA. Oh, you know that competition we talked about last year? Carrie was doing it. She actually was one of the top 100 in the nation. She told me today. So, yeah. So, yeah, she's actually applying for that same thing. So, but, all right. Um, any other questions? Yes. Is there scholarship money for the old? old, 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 old. Oh, Good question. Um, they do have some scholarship money. It's normally not that much. But I do know 4.0 students, they were giving full rides. you got to apply early. It's like you got to apply March for the next fall or something like that. But uh, we had Stacia Brewer came through here. She had a 4.0, and, yeah, they, they gave her a full ride instantly, housing everything. So the March prior to? I, I'm not positive. I thought it was like March for the fall because their summer starts in April. Okay. I, I, I don't know exactly. Do you know how they cover uh, Oklahoma State Region scholar, uh, scholars with scholarships for it? Don't know that. You have to call the bursar's office up there. Because, okay. you know, I teach for them. I've been teaching for them for 10, 12 years now. But for some reason, I'm not really in their system correct. I can't even log in to submit a syllabus. I always have to mail it to them. It's like, it's, I have a disabled student in my class this semester. They, I said, I cannot get the form. Okay, and I put it on the end drive. It's got your name on it. Go get. I said, I can't get on the end drive. Oh, sure. I said, no, trust me, I don't have an end driver. But it's crazy. I'm just, no. I went to get an ID card. It took me an entire day because I wasn't in their system. I'm like, but I teach for you. I don't know. It's crazy. Was the person whose information you said made no? Pam, yeah, ask Pam. She'll tell you who to contact. Yeah, good point. Um, but uh, 
the lady's name up there at OSUIT is Pam Ingham, I-N-G-H-A-M, Pam dot Ingham, I-N-G-H-A-M at okstate.edu. She can answer all your questions, or at least point you in the right place. Okay? She's awesome. She's, you know, she's the secretary of the dean, but she, like, does everything. She does all the advising, all the everything. So, um, we might take a trip up there, and we have in the past. We didn't last year because no one said they wanted to go. So... I mean, if you all want to go, I mean, what we did, last, not this last year, but the years before that, we actually took a Rose State van and went up there and visited for a day. They have a culinary school there. So we actually, they give us free lunch. They literally sit there, and they have everybody dressed as waiters with a towel. You take a drink, they fill up your water. You know, they fill up your water. It's like, because <laughs> they teach them how to be waiters and cooks and whatever they do at culinary school. I don't know. But, uh, was the food awesome? Actually, it was very good. Because there's like, 80 choices, and all the cooks, yes, today I made you, blah, 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 whatever. So, yeah, it's like they're all lined up with all the cooks and everything. So, lots of questions. About that. Yeah. All right. So, if you're interested in doing that this semester, I can possibly set it up. No guarantees. But, uh, possibly. So. All right. Now, if you're interested in the TU thing, because we are going this spring, you heard what the requirements are. If you want to go, let me know. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. Topics for next week. Good question. I'm open. Is it like SQL injection? I do not have time to get that ready. Sorry. Sorry. I, I really don't. Tomorrow I am working tomorrow, obviously, uh, but I am a, at a high school counselor's luncheon roundtable. Yeah. I mean, next Wednesday I am speaking to some other group of kids for two hours. So if you have any of interest, uh, what I'll do is some of you are already in the cybersecurity page. Those of you who are signed in today, I will add you if you're not in there. Shoot me an email. Just say, hey, could you cover whatever? I'm t I just don't have time for SQL injection. I actually have done a project in there in the past. But, uh, yeah. Now, for ISM, when I taught it last time, I actually did a, pro a project where we broke web encryption. Would that be interesting to some of you? I mean, web spoke, but still, seeing how to do it is kind of cool. So I already did that. There's actually a program out there called Web Lab, W E P L A B something or other, where you yeah, it's, it's awesome. Oh, just, just like just, just Wi-Fi encryption. Do what? What? Wi-Fi encryption. Oh, a lecture on that? No, is that what you're just Yeah, Web W E P. Oh, yeah, Web. I mean, it's basic, but still, it's kind of like you know, I teach you Caesar cipher, even though that's not used anymore. So. Okay. Why not? <laughs> oh, you missed this part. A student today jokingly was talking about a unique item in the shower and totally blew it off. That was the item. <laughs> so they found it online. Online. Uh, wait, wait, wait. On Rose's website? Or I never online? said Rose's website. <laughs> but they joking like, look at that, that's so funny. And they even knew what the question was. And they're like, darn it, that's not it. And they kept going. I'm like. <laughs> I'm still pissed at you for that 2004 question. I can't find the exact numbers, man. They're nowhere. All right, let me stop State recording. Has...